Hi guys, Brooke Potter here, coming to you live from Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, this is my follow-up video to my last video sp explaining the context of 1 John 1.9. Uh, now, in that video, I explained that 1 John 1.9 was a conversion passage uh, for those who were out of fellowship to come into fellowship that their joy may be full. I also made the statement that I believe the audience of the first chapter was speaking to Gnostics, and more specifically, Jewish Gnostics. And the reason I believe his audience was Jewish is what we're going to explore today. Now, as some people have pointed out in both gracious and maybe not so gracious comments, the verse of 1 John 1.9 actually does say that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Now, it implies at least in part that the forgiveness comes as a result of the confession. Uh, even though it's a conversion passage, they might say, well, your sins are only forgiven once you convert. Now, I want to point out that very similar language is used elsewhere in the Bible. And the best way to determine what a passage is saying is by comparing the Bible with the Bible. Uh, so we're going to look at those other two passages where very similar language is being used and see if we could determine who the audience is and maybe understand a little better about what's going on in these passages. Now, the first place we see similar language being used after the death, burial, or resurrection, and ascension of Jesus Christ is in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 38. Now, to set the stage, Pentecost has just occurred, cloven tongues of fire upon the disciples. And in verse 5, we read, And there dwelled at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now, I'm not going to read the entire passage, but I'm going to read a couple key scriptures leading up to what Peter says in verse 38, starting with verse 14. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which is spoken of by the prophet Joel. Now we must ask ourselves, who was familiar with the prophet Joel? This is an important question to ask ourselves when understanding the audience to which Peter is addressing. Further, let's look at verse 22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as you yourselves also know. Now, it's important to remember that Jesus was originally sent to the Jews. So the Jews were very much familiar with who Jesus Christ was and the signs and wonders that he performed in their midst. Another passage leading up to this is verse 29, which reads... Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us unto this day. Again, which people group would see David as their patriarch, and would Peter consider to be men and his, and his brethren? This leads us into verse 38, where Peter makes this statement. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now I think we can learn from this verse that Peter is speaking to a Jewish audience, and he is inviting them to repent and be baptized into Jesus Christ that they may receive the remission or the forgiveness of sins. Now at that time there were only two covenants on the face of the earth. There was the new covenant and the old covenant. Were their sins already forgiven? Yes, in the new covenant, but they were still living under the old covenant. And they were being called by this passage to come out from under the old, to gain access to the forgiveness that was freely given to them in the new covenant. So again, this is a conversion passage very similar to what we saw in 1 John 1.9. The other place where this language is being used is in the book of Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Now again, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'm going to point out a couple key passages so we can understand the audience to whom Peter is speaking when he makes his statement. So let's look at chapter 3, where this is where Peter and John healed a man at the gate beautiful at the temple. So starting with verse 1, which reads, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. Now we must ask ourselves, what people group would be at the temple at the hour of prayer? Further, let's look at verse 12. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we made this man to walk? The God of Abraham, and of Isaac, and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, 
whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and killed the Prince of Peace, whom God hath raised up from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. Now when reading these passages, we must ask ourselves, who were ye men of Israel? What was the people group that would be familiar with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? And what was the people group that stood before Pilate and said that they wanted Barabbas released, a murderer, rather than Jesus, the Holy One? Now let's read verse 17 and 18. And now, brethren, I wot that through ignorance ye did it, and as did also your rulers. But those things which God before had shown by the mouth of all his prophets, that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. Now again we ask, who were Peter's brethren? And lastly, what people group would be familiar with the prophecies concerning the Messiah? That takes us into verse 19, which reads, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Now again, I think it is pretty clear from the context of Scripture that Peter is speaking to a Jewish audience. They are the ones who would be at the temple, who would be familiar with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, would be familiar with the Messianic prophecies, who demanded the release of Barabbas, and who did these things in ignorance. Peter is now speaking to them, to inviting them to repent and convert to have their sins blotted out. Now this is very similar language to what we saw in Acts chapter 2 verse 38 as well as 1 John 1 9 that there seems to be a condition to the forgiveness but in these two passages we learn that that condition is only given to one people group the Jews who had to come out from under the old covenant to come into the new to receive the forgiveness that was freely given in the new. Now I want to contrast these passages with the conversion of the Ethiopian eunuch who was not a Jew found in the book of Acts chapter 8. Now in this case Philip runs alongside the carriage uh, hears him reading from the prophet Isaiah, uh, joins himself to him and explains uh, who Isaiah is speaking about in the person of Jesus. And let's read from verse 35. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me from being baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thy heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. I'd just like to point out that there was no prerequisite for the Ethiopian eunuch to repent before he was baptized. And the simple reason for that was the eunuch was not under the old covenant. The eunuch was a void of any covenant, and he was invited solely to the new. The prerequisite was only to believe. So even though I've shown that these passages are conversion in nature, that's not to say that I'm against repentance and confession in the lives of everyday believers. When I do things wrong, yes, I come before the Father and I confess and I repent because I'm honest about my shortcomings and weaknesses. I do not confess and repent to be forgiven though. I understand that I am forgiven, which is why I'm safe to come to him and confess and repent. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope you understand these verses in their context a little bit better. Uh, I may do one more video speaking about the forgiveness of sins for those who are not at the Kingdom Awakening. And I might also touch on the book of James and the, uh, the commissioning of the Apostle Paul. Uh, but be sure to like this video, subscribe if you'd like to see more. And uh, I look forward to seeing all of you really soon. So love you and God bless.